I am Valentina Sader, Deputy Director in Brazil, lead of the Adrian Arch Latin America Center here at the Atlantic Council, and I'm here with Garo Batmanian, General Director for the Brazilian Forest Service. Garo, we are here in Washington, D.C. for the IMF World mm -hmm. Bank meetings, uh, but I wanted to ask you, why should we be talking about nature-based solutions and why are they so important for these conversations here today? Nature is a basis for helping climate issues, but also for addressing biodiversity issues. If we lose tropical rainforests, temperatures in the world will increase by one degree centigrade. Mm -hmm. So why is it important for biodiversity? Because a hectare of forest does not provide only carbon. It provides, for instance, pollinators for 70 of the most important, of the 100 most important crops in the world. They are housed in the forest. He also cycles the water that rains for agriculture. We have to see nature not only as biodiversity, but also the services that the nature provides, water, control of flood, temperature, and climate, and biodiversity. You mentioned a few of the importances for the economy of these mm -hmm. countries all over the world, but why should, how should we go about financing nature-based solutions? We have in Brazil uh, starting a program where we are doing forest concessions, but for restoration. Mm -hmm. So the companies will win the bid with the concessionaires for the next 40 years will be required to restore a certain area that has been deforested. But they can sell the carbon credit, which is fine, because what we want is that hectare of forest in that particular place also to, to become a forest again. So that will be one way of financing. Other ways of financing nature-based solutions will be thinking about bioeconomy. Standing forests can be compared with other types of values. So maybe we can manage it with low-impact timber management. Maybe we can, uh, you can invest and, and start collecting under rubber. It can be financing not necessarily only towards non-reimbursable you know, donations, philanthropic. That's very important as well. Mm -hmm. But we can make this something that is economically profitable. Why? Because we can also create jobs for the people that live in the forest, because they are the tenants of that forest, so the forest dwellers, the indigenous people. So we can create a virtual cycle where the investment generates goods, but also maintains the people there. And by maintaining the people there, they protect the forest. So it, it becomes a, a, a virtual cycle if we make those investments. Thinking about this virtual cycle and the fact that we have, as of right now, COP16 happening in Colombia, mm -hmm. how do we tie the biodiversity COP with COP30, which Brazil is hosting in 2025? Uh, that's a very interesting question. We are already saying the road from Cali to Belém. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to think the road of Cali to Belém because one is the biodiversity COP and the other one is the climate COP. But we want to, to emphasize the importance of forests and the synergies between the two crops. It's time to have convergence between the two. If you know, one of the targets of the by the by the biodiversity convention is to protect 30 percent of the terrestrial areas. Well, if you protect the 30 percent of terrestrial areas, you're protecting the forest. By protecting the forest, you are mitigating emissions on climate change. Do you have another target for restoration? Well, if you restore for biodiversity, you're also restoring for carbon. So. There are a lot of synergies, and we have to start thinking them in tandem, because that also helps the financing, uh, the joint programs. You know, you can do activities that service, uh, supports more than one idea at a time. 